Well, good morning, Pasadena Covenant Church. Um, welcome to um, our Wednesday reflection. Uh, I hope that you're all doing well this morning. It's week two of um, a lot of the restrictions that have been placed on our community, but week one really of the, the safer at home rules that we're trying to abide by, right? So as you can see, um, the background's a little bit different. I'm actually not in my office. I'm, uh, we've converted our, um, our guest room into a makeshift office um, for as long as we um, are, are, are doing this together. Um, I don't know what your situation is and how you're arranging. Um, if you're if you're uh, a working professional um, that's outside of the home, what your setup is. I'd love to see pictures of it on our Facebook community. What you're doing to make life work in the midst of a pandemic, um, and I'll, I'll I'll be sure to share mine as well. It's it's uh, it's okay, I guess. I, you know, it's kind of nice that you can kind of take a nap in the middle of work, um, and uh, and so there are perks to the job. Let's put it that way. But, um, you know, our Wednesday reflection um, that we have right now is that, um, you know, we're, we've, we're going through Jonah and we're talking about what Jonah, um, how Jonah had walked through Nineveh and had preached um, and prophesied over, uh, over Nineveh and people responded. Um, but as we know, as we've been going through this, this um, story, that Jonah is kind of seen as the anti-prophet. He really doesn't want to do anything that God wants him to do. And yet, um, in his begrudging um, you know, obedience, he, um, God saves an entire nation. That God is the one that reveals himself as ultimately the most compassionate, the most merciful um, entity of, of them all, right? And we see kind of one of the th ways that you can see how Jonah journeyed through um, through Nineveh is that he just kind of speed walked through it. He didn't really want to interact with anybody. There wasn't any co you know conversation of of sorts, but he just kind of went through and said, "In forty days, you know, or um, or in three days, uh, the you know Nineveh will be destroyed." And so everybody panicked and they they um, they wanted to to repent. Um, and he just kind of made it out. They, you don't see anything. It was it was the hearts of the people that wanted to repent that really responded to um, to the to the prophecy. Um, and in the same way as we're looking here, uh, we find that so much of what we will, can tend to do with with these laws is that we just have to begrudging um, begrudgingly obey, and we can, we we are just going to lower ahead and plow through it, and and at some point the laws are going to be lifted, and, or the, the orders are going to be lifted, and then we're going to be back to normal again, right? But just like we see in Jonah three, you miss so much of the opportunity that you have here to see a nation come to life again, to see a nation repent, um, to see God show His compassion in relenting and bringing His justice and His wrath down on on a place. And so for us, we have to be people that, um, we're encouraged to be people that can live into that, that can press into that and not miss God's grace. And so I kind of wanted to share just three um, tips that you can have, you can take away for today, for this week, the ABCs of this week. <laughs> it might change next week. Um, but the first thing I wanted to share with you is, is A, abide in love. Abide in love. That's the first and most important thing. Is that you know, you know in John 15, it you know we we hear Jesus at the Last Supper. He's telling his disciples, "Abide in me. I am the vine. My Father is the gardener. He will tend to us as long as you stick with me. Stick with my love. Stick with how I live and and who I say you are. Um, because apart from me, you can do nothing. You're more like dead branches that they're just gonna be tossed and burnt. And I don't know about you, but you know." If you don't abide in, in God, it's pretty quick to find yourself dry and empty, ready, for, good for burning. Um, but instead, you, when you abide in God's love, you find that you are lovable in the midst of all these things that you're trying to do and you're trying to make everything work, is that you gotta figure out some time where you can provide self-care. Part of self-care is uh, of abiding in God's love is, is caring for yourself living in that love, right? So the first thing that I would want to encourage you to do is to think about what can you do today and for the for the days onward, one thing that you can do that would care for yourself. Journal, paint, um, just sit in silence, 
I was talking to Emily June and, and, and one of the things that um, we both really enjoy is just that quiet moment in the morning when we have our coffee or our tea and we read the paper. It's just a time of solace. Um, so maybe that might be something for you. It could be just being quiet. Number two is B, be carriers of grace. Okay, I, I, I was gonna write be gracious, but I think be gracious is an outward towards some other, somebody else type of action. Whereas we have to carry grace for ourselves as well. God's gotta give yourself a break, man. You know, you think about think about all the things that all the pressures that you have, all the things you have to do, all the transitions you got to take care of. If you have kids at home, if kids in school, especially you have teenagers who had tasted freedom and autonomy, and now they're they're locked in with you, you got to think about well, how do I be gracious to them while also be gracious to myself as I'm setting up my you know your little remote office. What does that look like? What do you need? Things are just gonna be a lot slower. Things are gonna be clunkier. You know, even here at church, we're trying to put out um, and reach out to you all and things are gonna change. Things are fluid because some things are working and some things aren't because we wanna make things happen, but we can't beat up ourselves when things don't work out or things are slower than, than you'd like them to be. Why? Because we're in a pandemic. Because things are not normal. You gotta allow yourself the grace to transition well. You need to allow yourself to grieve the things that you've lost, the dreams, the plans that you had for a spring break, for, for working, for these certain projects that are now put in the back burner or in the trash now because they're irrelevant. You gotta grieve and breathe. And then you have to extend that grace to other people as well. Because people in your household, people that are at work are just as overwhelmed as you are. And so you have to be carriers of grace. Allow yourself to experience grace when you feel frustrated at yourself, at how slow, or you forgot something at the office, you gotta go back there to pick it up, or whatever, what, what have you. Um, give yourself a break. Over-graciousness is the key here in this time. The last thing I'd, what I would say is connect to someone. Connect to someone. You know, when you're stuck here at home, it's so easy to just kind of be contained in this small little space and, and just get your stuff done. And, you, um, and you, 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 you take for granted all the hundreds of interactions that you actually had when you're at the workplace or you're you know, at you know, wherever, wherever you are, that you have this hello at the grocery store or at the, your, your barista, your coffee shop, or your, you know, people that you walk by and, and all of a sudden you're locked down and you're locked in and you just kind of, think that this is the way that it's supposed to be and you're not, you know, these walls confined you and it can be very isolating. When we're really given this gift right now, I'm talking to you, albeit that this is just a one-way conversation, but you have the opportunity to connect with somebody. So think about somebody that you might have connected today that you might have other, um, that, that you, you don't have the chance to because of the situation that you're in. Just give them a text, like, hey, what's up? you know, or, or give them a call. Or the other option is to reconnect with somebody that you haven't connected with. I, I'll just say for some people, some of you who are huge workaholics, um, you come back from the middle of the work week um, or at the end of the day and you're just exhausted and you're so tired and you have, you're kind of a, a smoking shell of yourself and you, you, you grunt to your family or your spouse and you come to go back to your bed and you don't talk and you're just done. Well, look, the silver lining to being working from home is that everybody's at home. And so what would it look like to have a lunch break with them? To just check in with your family saying, hey, top three. Or call it, call your your you know your your family who's far away. Say hey, let's have lunch together and just chit chat, right? So many opportunities that we have to connect with other one another to remind ourselves that we are not alone, because we're not. So sisters and brothers, that's my encouragement to you this time: to abide in love, be carriers of grace, and connect with someone. Let us be people that experience and see what God is doing right here, right. God be with you, have a great week, and we'll see you soon.